Jacob inserted the large rusted key into the gold deadbolt lock. With a quick turn of the wrist, he heard the lock click and disengage. He slowly turned the handle and put his weight into the door forcing it open. The door made a loud pop and the hinges hissed as the door slowly swung forward. He quietly turned around and slowly closed the door. Mr. Samael? He quietly said. Mr. Samael, I'm the volunteer at the hospital, sent over to check up on you. A loud moan came from the bedroom down the hall. Jacob turned towards the hallway and slowly made his way down the long corridor. The apartment smelled of a foul odor that he couldn't quite put his finger on. It was hard for Jacob to see anything because the light was low, but he could make out the religious decorations everywhere. Crucifixes, painting of Jesus, and other religious figures lined the walls. He reached the end of the dimly lit hallway and came to the door where he heard the moans coming from. Slowly, Jacob turned the knob and the door opened without any force. He closed his eyes and thought, Please don't be dead. He opened his eyes back up and peeked around the corner. Staring at him was an old man lying in a hospice bed. The man slowly lifted one frail arm and waved Jacob into the room. Hello, young man. He said in a deep, raspy voice. Come in and have a seat here next to the bed. He slowly turned his head and pointed to a chair sitting next to the bed. Hi, sir. I'm uh, the one the hospital sent over to check up on you. I'm here to make sure you have everything you need, Jacob said. The old man continued to look in his direction while pointing to the chair. What would an old, dying man like me need besides a blanket and a bed? The old man replied. I've got everything I need, my boy. Now, come sit and give an old man some company for a few minutes, if you would be so kind. The old man let out a deep, raspy cough. Jacob slowly made his way over to the man's bed and sat down on the chair. The chair made a loud squeal in its hinges as Jacob's weight came down on the seat. The old man's skin was of pale color and it hung low from his bones. He was covered up in a thick, black blanket. Jacob could hear the man wheezing with every shallow breath he took. How are you feeling, Mr. Samael? He asked. The old man slowly looked over at him and chuckled softly. How do you think I'm feeling, my boy? My body has forsaken me, I'm afraid, and death looms over my head at every moment. The old man said with a deep gasp. What is your name, my boy? He asked. It's Jacob, sir. Uh, he said as he put one hand on the bed. Ah, I see. Like the prophet. Have you read the Bible, Jacob? The old man asked. No, sir, but I hear good things, he replied. Listen, uh, Mr. Samael, I I'm not trying to be rude, but I really do need to get going. I, I just came here to check up on you, and you seem to be doing just fine. The old man smiled and shook his head. Yes, of course, my boy. You have things to do. I understand. Before you go, may I ask you one more question? Jacob nodded. Sure, Mr. Samael, he replied. Do you fear death? Jacob shrugged his shoulders. I can't say as I do. Death happens to all of us, I suppose. No point in fearing something that comes for everyone, he replied. What about you, Mr. Samael? Do you fear it? Jacob asked. No, my boy. As you said, there is no escaping from it, the old man replied. You know what I really think, Mr. Samael? If I'm being honest, I 
I think you look a bit tired, sir. The old man continued to wheeze with each breath. You look like you're ready to tie at any moment, if I'm being honest. Jacob touched the old man's arm and tilted his head to one side. Would you like me to help you, Mr. Samuel? He asked in a low whisper. I can end all the pain and suffering now. The old man took a deep, wheezing breath and stared at Jacob for a moment. You'd be so kind to do that for an old man? He asked. Of course, Jacob replied. I've done it many times before. This wouldn't be the first. And Jacob had done it many times before. In all of his years of volunteering for various hospitals, he had ended the lives of many of his patients. Jacob was a serial killer. He knew at a young age that he had something dark inside of him. As a child, he would torture and kill the neighborhood pets and then pretend to be worried for all the animals while being when the owner came asking if he'd seen their furry friend. Over the years, the darkness grew stronger. Once he reached adolescence, animals just couldn't fulfill his desire for death anymore. He needed more. He needed much more. Jacob needed to end the life of another human being to curb his appetite. I have this gift, you see, Jacob said. I can look into someone's eyes and I can see all their suffering. I can feel it when someone such as yourself has had enough and is just ready to go, Mr. Samuel. A few months ago, it was Mrs. Sheridan, and before that, Mr. Tiller, and many, many before them. Jacob smiled. I like to think of myself as an angel of death, Jacob said. I'm an angel sent here to simply stop all of the pain all of your pain, and finally help you be at peace. Uh, doesn't that sound nice, Mr. Samuel? Jacob asked. I really did want to just come in and check on you. But you just had to keep talking. My urges are now beyond the point of no return, I'm afraid, said Jacob. And if I say no? The old man asked. Jacob sighed and smiled. I think we both know we are well past that option, Mr. Samuel. You see, I'm going to have to kill you today. There is no escape, and there is no way out. I have to kill Mr. Samuel. Every so often, I have to feed that beast that lives inside of me. If I don't, then it'll get out of control and we just can't have that. It got out once before, and I almost got caught. I figured out a way to feed it, and no one ever suspects a thing, fortunately or unfortunately. However you want to look at it, Mr. Samuel. It's that time again. The beast inside me is hungry. And there's only one way to satisfy it. It's a win for both of us, though. Can't you see that? I get to satisfy my desire, and in doing so, I get to end all of your pain and suffering. You get to close your eyes and rest. You won't have to wait day after day, wondering when it will come because today is that day. Now is that time. Mr. Samuel took a deep, wheezy breath, and after a long pause of silence, the old man asked, Have you ever heard the story of the fox and the eagle? Jacob shook his head. Please, tell me, Jacob said. The old man nodded 
towards a large brown cupboard in the room. First, be a good lad and open that cupboard over there, will you? He asked. Jacob walked to the corner of the room and opened the cupboard door. Inside was a bottle of red wine. The wine was so red that it almost appeared to be black, and the bottle had no label. The bottle looked very old. In fact, it looked like it was older than the man himself. Would you be so kind to pour an old man a final glass of wine? Jacob shook his head and poured the wine into a dirty glass by the bed. He handed the old man the glass, spilling a little on the dark blanket. Mr. Samael took a slow sip, letting out a sigh of satisfaction. One day, there was an eagle out hunting for his family's next meal. The eagle wasn't out on this day looking for small prey. No, no. He was out hunting for a big game. The type of prey that would feed him and his family for a long time to come. On the ground, there was a fox. The fox was smart and cunning, as most foxes are. The eagle saw this fox and decided right then and there that the fox was going to be his mark. The eagle knew that it wouldn't be any small task taking down a fox, but still he was determined. The fox noticed the eagle circling him and recognized right away that the eagle was planning on making him his victim. The fox knew that he was way too cunning for the eagle. He knew that the eagle couldn't match his wits and speed. The eagle came bearing down towards the fox with razor-sharp claws, and the fox easily dodged the eagle's attempt without hardly any effort. The eagle then circled around and came back for another attack. The fox merely just dodged him again with ease. This happened for quite some time, over and over again. The fox was way too tricky and nimble for the eagle to get even one claw on him. After many attempts, the fox was starting to grow tired. He decided that he'd had enough time playing around with the eagle, and it was time to find some shelter so he could sleep in peace. The eagle was persistent. He followed that fox until it finally came to a cave. The fox turned around and just stared at the eagle almost as if he was mocking him. The fox then made his way into the cave to get some much-needed rest. He found a nice small nook in the cave to sleep after a long day of dodging the eagle's attacks. Just when the fox became comfortable, he heard a low growl behind him. The fox turned his head and saw the red glowing eyes of a monster. And before he could react, the jaws of the much larger and stronger creature grabbed onto his throat. There was a loud crunch, and the fox went limp. The beast dragged the fox's body out of its cave and disappeared back into the darkness. The eagle saw this and came down from the sky to claim the body of the fox for him and his family. The old man took another sip of the wine and sighed again. Jacob looked down at the old man and smiled. What a wonderful story. Mr. Samael, a truly remarkable tale of persistence and determination by the eagle. If he had given up and gone home, he never would have gotten a fox. Never give up and you shall be rewarded. I do love a good story like that, sir. Thank you for telling me. Jacob took a glance down at his watch. However, I am, um, I do think it is time, Mr. Samael. I need to be going soon. Well, we both need to be going soon, said Jacob. The old man looked back at him and smiled. 
the moral of the story was not the determination of the eagle, my boy. The moral of the story is that no matter how cunning and smart one may think they are, death comes for everyone. You said it yourself. There is no escape from eternal darkness. The old man's bed started to shake with a loud rumble. Jacob took a step back in surprise, knocking over the bottle of red wine. The old man slowly started to rise from the bed as the thick black blanket he was under wrapped around his body into a dark cloak. Jacob looked on in horror as several snakes began to slither out of the old man's mouth. His cheeks began to tear apart as even more snakes revealed themselves. The old man's eyes rolled into the back of his head, revealing nothing but white. Four more arms outstretched from behind him, revealing six in total. The palms of his hands had red, bloodshot eyes that stared into Jacob's pitiful soul. Jacob let out a shriek of terror and turned to run, but he couldn't move. His body was completely frozen in its place. He tried to close his eyes so he wouldn't have to stare at what the old man was becoming, but his eyelids ripped away from his face. Jacob screamed in agony. There was a loud, wet, crunching sound as black wings began to rise from the old man's back. Huge feathery appendages tore into the air as they flapped. A bright ring of white began to form around the old man's head, illuminating the entire room. Jacob could only watch and scream as the old man transformed into a dark entity right in front of his very eyes. The old man stood tall in his black hooded cloak. The snakes coming from his mouth hissed slithered from side to side. He reached out slowly and put one hand on Jacob's chest. You see, my boy, you were right. The old man said in a thundering, strong voice. Death comes for everyone. Blood began to pour from Jacob's eyes and ears. He gagged and choked as more blood began spewing out of the back of his throat. Jacob began to feel intense heat as his shoes combusted into bright red and blue flames. The fire slowly made its way up his legs, melting his flesh wherever it touched. All he could do was scream as the fire reached his waist and then his chest. The flames had now engulfed his entire body, and he could smell and hear his flesh as it spewed pus. The dark entity looked on as Jacob's skin boiled and fell from his body, revealing muscle and tissue. Jacob could feel every bit of the pain as his flesh popped and sizzled. After what felt like an eternity, after what felt like an eternity, the figure raised one of its six grotesque hands. It moved in close to Jacob's face, and the snake hissed and wrapped around his neck tightly. The old man whispered into Jacob's ear. This will be your eternity. The entity then closed its fist quickly and the snakes tightened around Jacob's neck as it broke with a loud snap. The fire immediately ceased and his blackened and charred bones fell to the floor. The room was now silent. Jacob's bones lay on the floor smoldering. A rat scurried out from a hole in the wall to nibble on whatever flesh, if any, still remained. Next to Jacob's bones lay a large rusted key with the word Volunteer etched into the steel. He was off to spend his eternity of fire and pain somewhere far away. Where? Well, that was anybody's guess. No one at the hospital saw or heard from Jacob again. He learned a very valuable lesson that day. The death is coming. There is no escape, and there is no way out. No matter how cunning or smart we may think we are, one way or another, death finds us all. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of Dark and Twisted Tales. This week's episode, Volunteer Work, was written and produced by William Bowser. If you'd like to hear more Dark and Twisted Tales, please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you, and good night.